that, is that for communion? What's that? Oh, yep. Oh, that's in the service. Yep. Oh, that's at the start. Yep, we did that. That's faith in God. Yep. Which is... Um slow and then you build up I think. So the intro is literally this. You shall go out with joy. Yeah, well, we've got 
one minute to find one, three minutes to sing it. Good morning, people. OQI 274, the car, you've left your lights on. So if you have RACV assist, you're fine. Sounds rather enlightening. What about your love keeps following you? Do I haven't done this for a while, but was it 352? In case you didn't hear it, OQI 274. What a great joy to be in the presence of God and a very special day that we have Mali Grace will be baptized. Let us begin. 
We come with joy to the celebration of God's love. We come with hope to this witness to God's power. We come with a willingness to proclaim God's presence to all. We thank God for this invitation to worship, witness, and serve. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we remain standing, let us sing together. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Let us take this time to confess our sins to God our Heavenly Father and seek the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Jesus, friend and brother, you taught us to abide in your generous love, for it completes our lives and gives us joy. You ask us to love others as you have taught us, for it brings joy. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, long ago Jesus said to his disciples, I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from God the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and Jesus speaks these words to us today. He forgives us and chooses us to be his friends, sharing his great work of love. Alleluia. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I declare to you that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 
I'll ask all the kids to come forward as we have the baptism song that will be played. And um, before the kids come, yes, Graham will pour the water. So let's all sing together your whole life long. to the holy baptism of Marley Grace Holmes, daughter of Lindsay and Ebony. The word of God teaches that people, when people are baptized, God, our heavenly father, welcomes them as his children. The word of God also teaches us that we are born sinful and unclean, but God washes us clean in the waters of baptism and we are born as God's children. Through baptism, our Heavenly Father gives us three gifts, forgiveness of sins, and he unites us with Christ Jesus so that we may share in his death and resurrection 
and he gives us the Holy Spirit to renew us and give us eternal life. I would like to invite Lindsay and Ebony as parents, godparents, Lauren and Simon, and congregational sponsors, Eric and Leonore, to please come forward. Dear parents, godparents, and congregational sponsors, do you present Mali for holy baptism? If so, say yes, I do. <laughs> Dear parents and godparents, God has appointed you to give godly leadership in your home, to recognize what God is doing in the life of Mali, and to help her grow in the good things of God. By presenting Mali, you are responsible for her upbringing in the church. Therefore, you are to show Mali the love of Jesus in your own lives. Pray for her, remind her of her baptism, and encourage her to keep growing in God's word and ensure that she receives the teachings from the Bible. It also means participating with other Christians in the worship life of the local church and supporting her in her relationship with Jesus towards the goal of eternal life. Do you intend to bring Mali in such a Christian way and give her encouragement? If so, say, yes, I do with the help of God. Fantastic. Therefore, let every darkness flee and may God's light shine on you, Mali, and make way for the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The good news is the Lord had made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. Therefore, in Jesus' name, I declare to you, Mali, be opened so that you may hear and speak the word of God. Receive the mark of the cross as Christ the crucified has redeemed you and given you this new life. Mali, receive the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ who says, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. As a blessing on Mali, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. You must today our daily bread. You must Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Mali, the Lord watches over you as you go out and as you come in, both now and forever. As Mali receives his blessing, let us, on behalf of Mali, make this confession of faith reminding each one of us in the God whom we believe. So together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again, ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Lord, and the life everlasting. Amen. On behalf of Mali, do you want to be baptized? If so, parents, godparents, and congregational sponsors, please say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Do you want to come here, please? Do you want to move a bit? Just a bit. Here we go. 
Maui. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> She's confirming I received the gifts. <laughs> It's a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you a new birth, Mali, and consecrated you by water and the Spirit, strengthen you with his grace to everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Molly, Molly, you are the light of the world, let your light shine before others so that they may see your deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. Eric and Leonor. You have agreed to care for this family on behalf of the congregation. You will be presenting Mali with the faith chest that has been lovingly put together by members of Holy Trinity. It contains gifts that remind Mali of her baptism and help Lindsay and Ebony to encourage her in her faith. So do you, bap um, do you promise on behalf of a congregation to support them and help Mali to grow into the faith you have confessed. If so, say yes I do with the help of God. <laughs> well, what a joy that all of you have been baptized. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy Father, renew Mali daily with your Holy Spirit and fill her with your kindness, compassion, and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear members, friends, family of Holy Trinity Congregation, receive Mali, whom God has given to us as a sister in Christ, pray for her and set a good example to Mali. Let us welcome her with an applause. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace, both now and forever. Amen. The risen Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts to the Lord Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's all please stand as we sing together.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you, this is my blood, blood of the new covenant, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Trust me again. 
Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O God. May I be like you. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. May the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve your body, mind, and soul to life eternal. Let us go in peace as we continue to serve our Lord with joy. As we remain standing, let us pray the Thanksgiving prayer together. Heavenly Father, you gave your Son to die and raised him to give us eternal life. Grant that we who have received his body and blood may live in him and serve you as the Lord. We ask this with Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please
please be seated as we now hear the word of God. The first reading is written in the book of Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. The Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptised with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Faith gives us victory over the world. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just going to disappear for a moment. The Holy Gospel is from John chapter 15, verses 9 through to 17. Jesus calls us his friends. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you my friends. For everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sing together. My Jesus, my Saviour, shout to the Lord.
grace and peace from God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be with us all. Amen. Please be seated. There was once a man who was in his front yard mowing grass and his attractive female neighbor came out of the house and she went straight to the mailbox. She opened it then, slammed it shut and stormed back into the house. A little later, she came out of her house again and went to the mailbox and again she opened it and again slammed it shut. Very angrily back into the house she went. As the band was getting ready to edge the lawn, here she comes out again, marched to the mailbox, opened it, and then slammed it closed harder than ever. Puzzled by her actions, the man asked her, is something wrong? To which she replied, there certainly is. My stupid computer keeps saying you've got mail. <laughs> How many times have you got it completely wrong? Dear friends, we assume things and we sometimes think we are absolutely right. How many times have we got it completely wrong? Is there something you've got completely wrong in the recent past? The theme for today is Jesus' victory conquers the world. The world has got it completely wrong. And Jesus reminds us that he has conquered the world too through his victory on the cross. Now there's a theologian, Brian, who once shared a story. He said it was about choosing basketball teams in a PE class. The teacher chose two captains who picked the rest of the team. Now as usual, the poor players were always chosen last, which did little to help them and help their self-esteem. Now Kevin was one of the main characters in this story and some of his friends who were usually chosen last, they went and complained to Kevin. So Kevin brings their complaint to the teacher who promptly makes Kevin one of the next captains. He has to choose his team and his best friend and one of the worst players looks at Kevin with eager anticipation. Will Kevin choose him early in the rounds or will he be like other captains? Kevin chooses his friend and he felt good about bolstering his ego. So the next round he chooses another poor playing friend and some of them had said, Kevin, Pick up some of those good players because we want to win the game. Kevin kept picking the losers and he felt good about it. And they felt good and they kept picking poor players. Kevin's team did miserably and they didn't come close to winning but they enjoyed the game. They weren't playing to win but they we're playing to have fun. We are called to be players in this world to have fun. Not to see who is on the winning side and to show who belongs to the losing side. If Jesus wanted to win the religious game, he would have chosen the Pharisees and the Jews. They were the extremely pious people in the first century. They were the ones who prayed three times a day and they fasted at least twice a week. They obeyed God's laws and they gave 10% of their income. Now who did Jesus choose? He chose fishermen known to be crude and foul-mouthed, impatient and hot-headed. Sorry if there are any fishermen here. <laughs> <laughs> he, ch 
he chose a tax collector known to be a swindler. He chose a zealot, a fanatical revolutionary. Jesus chose you and me, known sinners, known to be somewhat less than perfect, known to have all kinds of problems in our lives. As someone else coined a slogan saying, God elects the rejects. God elects the rejects. But there's a difference between Jesus' team of Paul players and Kevin. Because there was one point where Kevin's team wanted to win. But Jesus' victory is already assured for you and for me to, through his death on the cross. It's not about winning and losing, my dear friends. It's about enjoying the game. It's about having fun. It's all about being filled with joy and having life in abundance. But we get it completely wrong. That we want to keep showing people that you are either on this side or that side. We somehow stop having fun in faith. Probably 30 years ago, the church was the social hub where people would all come to the church and have fun because faith was fun. Might be we've become too serious in life and God wants to remind us today that faith is fun. And let's see how Jesus' victory conquers the world. In the first letter of John chapter 5, verse 4, the good news says, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. Whoever is born of God has the power to conquer the world. And today we witness Mali. Each one of us who are born of God have the power to conquer the world with our faith, with God's love. And love is born from God, and God chose Kevin in that illustration to choose a team of failures not to win basketball game, but to win their hearts in the game of God's kingdom. Are we here to win the hearts of people or to break? God continues to prepare you and me in this world not with rage or anger or fighting or destroying or separating one another, but with love. So the first thing that God wants to teach us today is Jesus conquers us through this agape love. We all have battled in life in some way or the other. But in an army, when soldiers are prepared for a battle, they are trained to be alert and they're given the weapons so that they may be able to fire when needed. In a similar way, God prepares us to fight every battle, not by weapons that destroy the other, but weapons that will build one another. What weapons are we using as a church? Are we using to build one another or break or destroy. The words agape or the word agape is used nine times in the text that was read to us today. It's a reminder that this verb first expresses God's love for us in verse nine and then it expresses Jesus' love for his followers where he says, I have laid down my life for you and I call you my friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you, that you may bear fruit, fruit that will last. You and I are chosen by God and you are not here by yourself, but it is because God has chosen you. And then the next verb is the disciples' love for one another. And then it also is used as a noun where it shows Jesus' love for the world, 
the Father's love for the world and for his son Jesus, and human Jesus' love who laid down his life for us. This is the love that you and I have received. A love that can break a heart of a stone. A love that can do wonders. A love that we experience in each other's lives. The second thing that God reminds us is Jesus conquers us through his water and blood. And John shares this in this epistle where he says that you have received the weapons of water and the blood of Jesus who gives us the power to fight every battle. Now we know that water is baptism and blood is the death of Jesus on the cross. A classic example is today, Mali was baptized and when Mother Ebony came for uh, Holy Communion, she received the blood of Jesus and that is fed to the child. Where the child receives the water and the blood. It is by water and blood that Jesus conquers our hearts and his love enables us to conquer the world. We receive this every Sunday. And Paul says, remind your bap remind, be, be reminded of your baptism every morning when you wake up. Know that your yesterday was buried just as Christ was buried. And as Christ rose again from the dead, your day begins as a new creation in Christ, as a new being. You no longer belong to the old self. This is that love that we receive that conquers us through water and blood. The third thing that God reminds us is God conquers or Jesus conquers us through obedience. Another theme is commandment. My commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. And this love is to show how much Jesus loved you and me, that he was obedient to the will of the Father. Now, a lot of people in this generation probably don't understand the concept of obedience. They want to have a say in everything. But obedience is something that reminds you of what love the Father or the parent has for you. What is this love that the husband has for the wife and the wife for the husband? And the word of God says we are to keep this commandment that Jesus gives to you and to me. And the word to keep, terio, means to hold dearly. To hold his word dearly and it's a blind obedience. And in a love relationship, one should want to do what the other asks. And I'm sure men and women will say sometimes, I just do it to keep the peace. There are some heads nodding. Well, such obedience isn't a burden, but it's a free and joyful response of God's love that we learn to be obedient to each other, that we may experience love. It comes naturally to know what the other wants, and that's why the Word of God says that two become one flesh, that we could know what the other is experiencing, whether the other is broken or hurt or sad, or the other is joyful, and what can I do to make the other joyful? Jesus teaches us obedience to hold dear his word in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Now the law that is given to us is to experience God's love through this obedience. It's not to put us down. And something for the parents to realize that we cannot win our children's hearts by laying the burden of law. But we can win their hearts 
by gently correcting them with love. Love that abides in us through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's this love that God wants you and me to exercise and experience with each other. This agape love that he gives us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That we can have a conversation with one another. That we can love one another and accept each other for who they are. Rather than whom we think they have to be. Peace begins when expectations ends, my dear friends. And this is the transforming love that you and I have received. And sometimes you might think we are losing every day by loving the other and being obedient and doing things in love. But it's not in vain, my dear friends. We are sowing God's love every day. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit to transform and soften the other person that the other person may see. Faith means to remember that victory is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. And praise be to God that we have received the spirit and the truth to show us the way and to show us that we belong to God, children of God. Conquerors to conquer the world through love. And may God's love abide in you and may his peace that passes all understanding Guard our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we sing our next song, let us give our offerings to God, and I'll be heading off to Sunnyside for the service there, as it is the first Sunday of the month. God be with you.
Let's pray together with thanks for all that God gives us. Together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for showing us your love in your Son, Jesus, and for making us his friends. Help us to love you and obey your commands, and so love one another. Teach us to accept and serve others as you have accepted and served us. Amen. Are there anybody here with announcements? Um, this announcement is regarding the Indian night that is on the 31st of May and uh, the last day to book for uh, the Indian night is on the 19th of May so you can uh, see Heather for that. Uh, children under 16 are free and please bring your own drinks. Um, another thing if there is anyone who wants to bo borrow any Indian attires to wear on the Indian night, uh, I'm happy to lend you so you can meet me. Any jewelry, I'm talking about women. And, <laughs> and uh, for men, you can talk to hands. And uh, I also have few dresses for girls and I think I'll have something for little boys also. So if you need anything like that, I'm very happy to help you. Thank you. I've just been reminded to tell you of great importance there's no cup of coffee this morning or tea, so we don't discriminate. You're not getting anything. Um, as Barry comes up, prepare for our readings. In the power of the Spirit, let's pray with confidence for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Spirit, you call us into congregations and provide the people who lead and serve in many different ways. Our pastors are special to us and they bring us your word into our lives. Thank you for Pastor Hans and his family. Church council and pastoral assistants are chosen by the gifted and gifted by, the, by you and our leaders. Please continue to bless them as we look to the future where we are to follow Jesus by telling and teaching the good news of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we worship you in many different ways and at many different times during our days. We set aside Sundays to gather together as your presence to praise, give thanks, listen to your word and receive the blessings you give us. Thank you for these times and we thank you for many pastors, for the many pastors, pastoral assistants and worship assistants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, you call us into your family and make us your children through baptism. Thank you for keeping our faith alive and growing. Today, Marley Hobbs has become your child on her baptism. Be with her parents, Lindsay and Ebony, as they share and model your love, hope, joy and peace within their family circle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations for all people, as we live in the community of Horsham, as well as all places where your people live, we pray for our civic leaders, businesses and politicians that they may <coughs> make wise decisions, provide the needs of the inhabitants and care for those who struggle with living. Thank you for medical facilities, police force, emergency services and first responders and all the citizens who make this a good place to live. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Our continuing prayers, Almighty God, are for the Lutheran Church of Australia and New Zealand and especially for the coming synodical convention with the theme, Way Forward, as all delegates approve various ways that we, your church, can be effective in witnessing, preaching, teaching, and living your way to bring Jesus' salvation and presence with us all. And always 
for those who are searching for the way, the truth and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Barry. Heavenly Father, through the spirit of your Son, let us remain in your love and bear much fruit in our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus who chose us and appointed us to bear fruit that will last. Amen. Amen. Go now and bear fruit for God, fruit that will last. As Christ has loved you, so love one another and abide always in God's love and your joy may be complete. And may God give you all you ask for in Christ's name. May Christ Jesus reveal to you God's ways and call you his friends. And may the Holy Spirit confirm the truth within you and make your joy complete. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Can we stand as we sing, as we go? Now this song does involve clapping of hands, so if you feel like you want to join in at the appropriate time, please do. Shall go. 